Welcome. Welcome. Today is Thursday, October 6, 2022. It is 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and this is the monthly meeting of the Revere Human Rights Commission. Let's do a um, roll call of the commissioners for attendance, and um, if you are so inclined to share your pronoun, please do so. Commissioner, Commissioner Alexis is absent. Reverend Bogut Min is absent. Chief Bright. Here. Chief Callahan is absent. Dr. Garcia. Here. Uh, Vice Chair Hosseini. Present. Uh, present remotely on Zoom. Commissioner McGee. Present. Uh, Commissioner Mukabir. Present. Present remotely on Zoom. Commissioner Pish. Present. Uh, and we have an empty seat. Uh, Kathy Reinstein has resigned due to um, conflict in scheduling and other professional reasons. And I am the chairperson, Grill O'Mara, and I use she, her pronouns. Before we um, begin, I'd like to take a point of personal privilege and make a few brief announcements. First is um, that our previous director, um, Dr. Maritza Barros, which was Chief Officer of Talent and Culture, she resigned in late June. Um, it was sad to have her go, but she um, got a really wonderful opportunity for her own uh, advancement, and which um, was a good fit for her personally uh, as well as professionally and in this field to advance uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'd also like to um, acknowledge the tragedy today in Thailand um, that at least last I checked, 35 plus people were killed in Thailand. It started at a daycare center and it included 23 children. And lastly, um, in, a, in a closer to home uh, way, it's sad to say that um, Councilor Rotundo died unexpectedly September 11th last month. Um, so I ask that we all just Stand for a moment of silence, um, particularly for Councillor Rotundo. Thank you. And um, I will share my screen. We will do a land acknowledgement. And the reason we do this is to pay respect and honor to the original overseers of this land. We would like to acknowledge the traditional overseers of this land on which this meeting takes place, as well as honor what this land means to the culture and traditions of those who originally occupied this space. In addition, we extend a welcome to any Aboriginal, Native American, and or First Nation people joining us today. And you can see from the map that we are in this yellow section, the Wampanoag Territory. And in this next image, Revere, the eastern Massachusetts area, is on the land of the Pawtucket tribe. So it's especially um, meaningful this month 
next month. It's always meaningful to pay this tribute, um, but we'll just take a moment now. And we typically begin our meeting in a way of um, arriving and settling so that we can be more present um, ourselves and to each other and to those who are watching with us um, whenever that is in time and space. And so I'd like to share this um, poem and then we'll just sit quietly for a few moments. So this is my poem, author is unknown. My poem is a song to human rights for all, from fragile childhood to neglected old age. My poem means to be a herald of faith, tolerance, and freedom, faith in human rights for all, in which only equality could exist. Tolerance to enable walking is one along a common path. The freedom to express our feelings and our dreams. My poem means to be like the clear, transparent water which springs from the distant Sierra and flows through the Earth's streams. My poem is inspired by the strength of trees in springtime their green shoots will blossom and bear fruits of many colors. My poem wants to run like the blood which flows in veins both Asiatic and African. My poem is for Jews, Palestinians, and Americans, for black people and for gays, for mistreated women, for gypsies, and for the aged. My poem is for those who suffer rejection, cast out by a dehumanized society, turned antisocial through prejudice, which has no respect for diversity. How poor the earth would be without a rainbow on the horizon or the shining of the stars. So let's just take a few moments. Just find a comfortable position, and if it's helpful, you could take some slower, deeper breaths. Just be curious how you might be more tolerant of your own experience in this body, heart, mind. And the more that we can not turn on ourself and our experience, then we're more able to be that way with others and in the world. And so I ask that the commissioners who are in here in person, if you'd like to join me, we um, traditionally will state our mission statement together. And unfortunately, those on uh, Zoom will have to stay muted because of feedback. So you can please unmute yourself if you're in person. The mission of the Revere Human, Human Rights, Rights Commission, Commission is to, to promote, promote human and civil rights, rights and empower all people of Revere by ensuring that everyone, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized, have equitable opportunities, equal access, and are treated with dignity, respect, fairness, and justice. Thank you. Um, I neglected to state that we do have one, 
two, three, four, five uh, commissioners in person and two on Zoom, so we do have a quorum present. We need six or more for a quorum. I want the record to reflect that. And um, now we'll move on in our agenda for the approval of the minutes from the June 2nd monthly meeting. Just to note that um, we did not meet over the summer because of um, having a break with having a director as well as there were some conflicts with scheduling with um, administrative and clerical support. And so that's why we didn't meet. So we're sorry, we missed you. And. Um, the minutes from the June 2nd meeting, which was an all remote meeting, uh, were sort of have been on our webpage since 10 days after the meeting and were sent out to the commissioners um, prior to this meeting. So, um, does anyone have any questions or uh, proposed changes to those minutes? And if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I make the motion to approve the minute. Second. Um, all in favor, you can either raise your hand or say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, all in favor, both in present and remote. So the next item on the agenda is um, monthly acknowledgments with um, event highlights. I'm just waiting a moment for Madam Clerk to uh, hand out um, a document on open meeting laws and guidelines for conduct. So um, in the month of October, I'm just going to mention um, some uh, highlights, this by uh, all means is not exclusive, this is just sort of a listing. Um, beginning September 15th to October 15th is Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month. Uh, October is Italian Heritage Month. Uh, it's Filipino Heritage, uh, Filipino American Heritage Month and Polish American Heritage Month. It's also a month where certain um, awarenesses are um, brought forth. Domestic violence, bullying prevention, Down syndrome, and national disability employment. So that's not, of course, uh, an exhaustive list, but it is some of the highlights that I wanted to mention. Did anyone have any uh, key ones that I overlooked? Okay. So seeing and, and hearing none, I'd also like to um, mention two uh, events in October. One was this past weekend, the Shirley Ave Cultural Festival. Um, I was unable to attend. If there were any commissioners that were able to attend and you'd like to briefly speak uh, about your experience at that um, cultural festival, please unmute yourself or raise your hand. Okay. And also I want to announce that tomorrow, Friday at 12 o'clock, on the City Hall Plaza is the Italian flag raising. And they will raise the Italian flag and there usually is also some other festivity speakers and food. So um, please try to attend if you're available, those of us uh, members as well as anyone that's watching or listening. So next, um, we are going to discuss the HRC banner. Um, over the summer, while we didn't meet publicly, we um, want Vice Chair Hosseini um, offered to design a banner that we might use. And um, so I'm going to share my screen, and I want uh, to get everyone's input. Now, there are two versions. Okay. 
Let me just see if I can enlarge this at all. I'm not sure. Yeah. So this first version, I don't know if you can see, but in the background, in a very sort of, um, it's sort of whitewashed, but there's all different flags. So that's a, a nice backdrop, or you can see it much better than my screen. And this one here has the complete mission statement on it. This would not be intended to be printed because it has so much text on it. This might be used, say, for websites or any kind of online presence that there might be more space for the text. And then this version sort of summarizes the mission statement in those um, you know, specific words or phrases. Now, this could definitely be print because there's less text on it. So the, the sort of question and the discussion for input in feedback is, do we like having two of them to have one with the full mission statement and one that's more of a synopsis? Or is it preferable to just have the one that's a summary that just is used sort of universally? So before, I, and I'll screen share again if I need to, but for right now I just would like to give Vice Chair Hosseini um, an opportunity in case, since she designed it, um, Vice Chair, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, thank you very much, um, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have anything to add. I feel like you really summarized exactly what I did um, uh, in terms of my work on the banner. Um, yeah, the whole the whole reason why I did make two was for that was for the exact reasons that you mentioned, which is one is for print stuff that something that we would bring to like events to show that our advocacy, and the other one would just be on like our website and stuff like that. Um, yeah, um, uh, I just wanted to let you know that the end result of these um, banners of the design, it was a collective um, effort ultimately since I got advice from everyone of what makes our banner um, special and how to make it even more special. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I have to say, but I think you summarized it pretty well. Thank you, Vice Chair. I, I also want to mention that I believe there might be a, a Zoom technical issue that those that those commissioners that are on Zoom are unable to display their video. So uh, we apologize, but we need to. We're, oh, there we go. <laughs> it just, it just started uh, we figured working. something out. Someone did. Thank you to whoever figured it out. Um, okay, so the I guess the discussion now is. Do we want to have the two banners, you know, and use them, one for print and one if, if we can use the full mission statement? Or would we prefer to just go with the one that's shorter? As well as if for some reason you did not see these, um, feel free if there's anything you want to add because it's not finalized at this point. So I'll open it up. Um, whoever would like to go first. Chief, Chief Bright. Yeah, Madam Chair, thank you. I, I like the two banners. I like the idea of having dual banners, one to put on the website and one for our purposes for events and, and such that kind of, you know, key in on the uh, important phrases in there. And um, I think that could, yeah, be, serve a useful purpose having, having two of them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I, first of all, I'd like to um, thank Shane for working on these banners. Um, <clears throat> one suggestion I would make would be uh, to ensure that those flags that you have represented on the background, those flags, uh, they certainly represent um, uh, multiple nations, we want to make sure that they are quite illustrative and they, um, they're visible. Because the way it is right now, it's kind of fuzzy. I'm, I'm not sure if it is because I don't have a computer in front of me or it's just because on the camera. I want to make sure that it's really, it's a little bit more visible for people to see. Because some of the 
flags uh, certainly, you know, it's a little bit fading, but the idea of having all those flags representing different countries uh, is an excellent one. I'm just trying to see if we can really, you know, uh, ensure that uh, they are visible, a little bit more visible, that's all. But I also agree that um, the two banners, uh, the idea of having the two banners is good because one certainly is a little bit more formal, more descriptive, and uh, that should go on the website. The other one, we can play with, with the words and stuff like that. The summary is a good one. So um, I think the idea is good. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Thank you, um, Vice Chair Hosseini, for your creativity and putting the banner together. Greatly appreciate your time and effort. I like both banners. Um, also, well, I wouldn't change anything. I, I like both. Thank you. If, if you don't, um, don't feel you have to say something, if there's nothing to add. Nothing to add, what everybody else said. I really like it. Vice Chair Husseini, thank you very much for incorporating uh, the different flags. I think accentuating possibly flags, communities that are represented within Revere or, or, or that we serve, uh, whether it's uh, just making sure that all those flags really stand out, um, like Dr. Garcia said. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you. Um, anything else? Yes, Commissioner Mukabir. Uh, Before I cannot uh, turn on my video for some reason, uh, but I uh, really like both uh, uh, both banners. They were made. Uh, for two different purposes, one for online presence, as you mentioned, uh, which uh, which is very descriptive and it has our mission. But for the uh, print version, uh, we may want to put the summary in there, which she did, and I think she uh, did an excellent job. I just want to thank you for putting the time into that. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So it sounds like um, maybe there might be a little bit more of tweaking around the background, the how much it's washed out and the clarity um, and sort of before we finalize it so we can follow up, um, you know, after the meeting about that and keep everyone updated. Anything to add, Vice Chair Hosseini? Um, no, um, I... Uh Thank you, everyone, for your uh, for, um, for your comments. In terms of the back, um, the the background, I also had a really hard time with it because I could change the opacity of it, and I'm just like, how um, how opaque can I make it without it blending in with like the words? But you know, it, it, we could, there's always going to be a f uh, way we can figure out around that. So yeah, but I agree with everyone what everyone is saying. Okay, thank you. Um, and so the next item on the agenda, we will be sharing a video excerpt on Columbus and Indigenous Peoples Day. And this 11-minute um, video excerpt is um, from the January 11th, 2022 uh, State of Massachusetts Indigenous Legislative Agenda. And the featured speakers are Matoin Monroe, who is a Lakota from United American Indians of New England, and Heather Lavelle, who is a representative from Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, before I go, we go further, I'd like to just sort of say out directly that we realize Revere has a long and full history of Italian Americans living in this community. And 
and our um, sort of efforts on sharing videos like this and other information are not to any in any way dismiss Italians or deny Italians. Um, it is more about learning what maybe we didn't learn. There's a saying, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and so how can we just maybe learn some more and be more inclusive? So it's not about Xing out anyone. It's about learning how we can add in. And so I'm going to just share, and, and I wanted to use this video because then you're really hearing from people that were representatives that went in front of the state. And I just want to share a very brief um, sort of um, summary before um, we play the video. Columbus Day is a U.S. holiday that commemorates the landing of Christopher Columbus in the Americas in 1492. It was originally observed early October, every October 12th, but was changed to the second Monday in October, beginning in 1971. It was unofficially celebrated in a number of cities and states as early as the 18th century, but did not become a federal holiday until 1937. For many, the holiday is a way of both honoring Columbus's achievements and celebrating Italian-American heritage. But throughout its history, Columbus Day and the men who inspired it have generated controversy, and many alternatives to the holiday have been proposed since the 1970s, including Indigenous Peoples Day, now celebrated in many U.S. states and cities. Um, and so, Madam Clerk, will you be able to play the video for us? Okay, moving next up, we have the Indigenous Peoples Day bill. Um, and so presenting on that, we have Matoi Monroe, is a Lakota and co-leader of the United American Indians of New England. In addition, Matoi represents the statewide Indigenous Peoples Day Coalition and Massachusetts Indigenous Legislative Agenda. Um, following her, we have Heather Lavelle, is the co-founder of Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day. So over to you guys. Popila. Thank you, Samantha. Good evening. I'm speaking from the shared territory of the Massachusetts and Netmuk tribes today in support of legislation to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day in Massachusetts. The bill is entitled An Act Establishing an Indigenous Peoples Day, and the numbers are S2027 and H3191. I'm gonna start by saying that Massachusetts has more than 90,000 people of Native American and Alaska Native heritage. In addition, there are many thousands of indigenous people here from Mayan, Andean, and other communities who are often misclassified as so-called Hispanics. The two federally recognized tribes in state are the Aquina Wampanoag and Mashpee Wampanoag. There are other tribal nations that are not federally recognized, including the Massachusetts at Ponkapog, the Nipmuc, and other Wampanoag bands such as Herring Pond. Additionally, there are thousands of other people who come from tribal nations outside of Massachusetts, such as myself. I'm starting with this information because many non-Native people in Massachusetts are largely unaware of our presence or our history. I read that 40% of non-Native people said they had never met someone Indigenous, and that many believe we are extinct or that we all live on reservations. We are not extinct. Nearly 75% of Native people do not live on reservations. Since 2015, we have been working in towns and cities across Massachusetts to advise and help bring forward Indigenous Peoples Day resolutions. Sometimes when we go into towns and cities, we have educated people on select boards and city council who say that they, that they didn't think that there were any Native people around. They think that they have no Indigenous people living in their town very often as well. 
So we go in and present to them and talk to them about Indigenous Peoples Day. And every year, more cities, towns, and school systems across the Commonwealth have chosen to make this change from Nantucket to Marblehead, Somerville to East Hampton, Cambridge to Holyoke to Boston. An increasing number of states have followed suit, including our neighbors in Maine and Vermont. We need this statewide bill because celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day will more properly reflect what should be equitable values in our state. We need this statewide bill because Indigenous people are too often insulted and demeaned, both publicly and privately in some towns where Indigenous Peoples Day hearings take place. Inside and outside of town halls, we have been called cannibals and heathens and savages, told to go back where we come from, asked why we, we, asked why we are even there since we are extinct, and physically threatened by people who refuse to learn the truth about Columbus. We should not have to continue to deal with that. Indigenous people have been asking that Indigenous Peoples Day replace Columbus Day since at least the 1970s. Nearly all of us were falsely taught as young children that Columbus discovered America. Well, I'm here to say that Indigenous people were not discovered by anybody since we were already here and we certainly were not lost. We did not need to have civilization or spirituality brought to us since we already had many civilizations and beliefs. We had and still have the inherent right to continue to live in our own ways on our own lands. Columbus's policies on the islands where he landed, including slave labor, starvation, sex trafficking of women and girls, and outright slaughter, resulted in the near complete genocide of the indigenous peoples of Haiti, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and other places where the Spanish invaded. Altogether, Columbus shipped approximately 5,000 enslaved indigenous peoples across the Atlantic, filling his pockets and setting the stage for the transatlantic slave trade and the enslavement of millions of African as well as indigenous people. The Spaniards engaged in many acts of cruelty and murder, such as cutting off the hands of indigenous people to test the sharpness of their blades. The brutality of Columbus's actions would reverberate through all the other invasions to come and the tens of millions of deaths that would follow. Celebrating Columbus erases centuries of indigenous reality. It erases the decimation of Taino, Arawak, and many other peoples, and the endlessly spiraling impacts of the transatlantic slave trade that Columbus started. It is an effort to silence us, to make our experience invisible. It has a terrible impact, not only on us and especially our kids, but frankly, it has a terrible impact on non-Native people to pretend it's all right to continue to do this. We don't seek to erase history. We seek to correct it. And what happened is not a matter of interpretation. When a handful of people nowadays try to say that Columbus was not so bad, he was simply a product of his times, all you have to do is read the firsthand accounts of some of his contemporaries, such as the priest Bartolome de las Casas, who came to be horrified by all that he saw. We have been asking for Indigenous Peoples Day to be recognized everywhere in order to educate the public about Columbus and also, even more important, to educate the public about the Indigenous past and present and future of where they live. Indigenous Peoples Day is a positive celebration. It changes the conversation from Columbus and all of the Europeans who would follow to indigenous histories, to our resilient cultures, our contemporary issues, and our continuing presence on our lands. This change is long overdue, and we need support from all of you to make this happen. Wopila, thank you.
Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Heather Lavelle. Matoe, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this space with you. I live and work on the unceded traditional territory of the Massachusetts and Nipmuc tribes. I'm a second generation Italian American and co founder of Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day. Italians for IPD is comprised of hundreds of progressive Italian Americans across Massachusetts who stand in solidarity with Indigenous peoples in our support of the Indigenous Peoples Day Bill and the entire Massachusetts Indigenous legislat legislative agenda. Our membership includes elected members of the state legislature. We are working to dispel the popular perception that all Italian Americans are pro-Columbus. Many of us feel that a holiday that celebrates the resilience of indigenous peoples is far more truthful and reflective of our values than one that honors a man whose legacy is characterized by white supremacy, genocide, and colonial imperialism. Any association with Christopher Columbus diminishes our culture and does not appropriately honor the struggles and the contributions of our ancestors. To those who defend Columbus as a, quote, great admiral, who, quote, discovered a new world, we say, stop propping up the writings of a few outlier historians and denying the truth of firsthand accounts, indigenous knowledge, and the vast majority of academic scholarship. Those who continue to peddle myths and mistruths about Columbus rub salt in the wounds of indigenous peoples living with intergenerational trauma and undermine the lessons that we are all trying to teach our children about the importance of critical thinking and historical truth and having empathy. To those who try to justify Columbus Day by characterizing it simply as a celebration of Italian American culture. We say that that is the same logic used by some Southerners who claim that the Confederate flag is an expression of their cultural pride rather than the racist symbol we know it to be. To those who assert that Columbus Day in some way makes up for the terrible religious and ethnic discrimination our ancestors experienced, we say that because of those experiences, we should have zero tolerance for acts of oppression against others. In fact, many of our parents, our grandparents, our aunts and uncles who directly experience anti-Italian prejudice and discrimination are proud members of Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day. We encourage all of our non-native sisters and brothers to remember that Columbus was purposely introduced and embedded in our country's founding mythology long before large-scale Italian immigration. And all of us who are part of this country's dominant culture must take collective responsibility for the false and incomplete telling of our history and for our misplaced adulation of Columbus. The Indigenous Peoples Day Bill is about acknowledging and making amends for one of our country's original sins, the way we have treated the first people of this land. Indigenous peoples are presenting us with a really wonderful opportunity to take a first step toward healing and reconciliation together. And this is truly a gift for the benefit of us all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so um, that was an excerpt at the um, state legislative affairs. Uh, and in our community, in the Human Rights Commission, we're really uh, at the beginning of trying to learn more and trying to have better conversations so that we can have more understanding and how we can move in a direction where we can still celebrate Italians during October and Italian Heritage Month and at the same time move forward to be able to adopt attitudes where we can also honor the indigenous people that were the first people of this land. And we are on you know, the Pawtucket tribe's land. So I will open this up if any commissioners uh, would like to share anything um, from the video or anything else. Just, you know, be mindful of allowing others to speak. I always have a lot to say about Indigenous Peoples Day and uh, Columbus Day as we talk about our 
professions being on this commission. I'm an immigration attorney. So I love the, the study and the history of people and, and how they've traveled and where they go still to this day and in history. So the history of Columbus is, is one of the interesting uh, immigrant stories of the United States, if you, if you want to coin it as such. And in Revere, I think it's particularly special to work and live um, being on such uh, historic land. Boston in general, you know, um, the name of our, our city, Revere, after Paul Revere. Um, but the people that inherently had to be here before um, colonists and, and original, I guess, the, the term would be voyagers from Europe and Spain. Um, the coastal nature that we love so much about this city exemplifies how original first people would have been here. Areas that we, as a society, love and enjoy here in Revere are sacred uh, indigenous land, uh, specifically in Revere, uh, Rummy Marsh. It makes up a large area, not only in Revere, I think Saugus and some other areas. People with more knowledge uh, know more, but the history is it's unparalleled uh, here in Revere. And I think taking the time to acknowledge it is so important all the time, but I'm glad we get this, this opportunity right now. It's not in Revere, but Deer Island um, has a very important history in the local area, as well as uh, King Philip's War, um, Metacom's War. Um, these are really, really interesting history lessons that I think throughout the United States kids get taught. I know we did, even if it's nominal, um, the literature and the, the rhetoric surrounding the way we're taught is starting to finally change. Um, I, I like here in Revere that hopefully we're going to give everybody more of an opportunity to talk about um, a negative legacy as opposed to um, a legacy period. Um, the legacy that keeps getting brought up for the people that are original to this land when we celebrate Columbus Day is very painful. Um, and I, I, I like most about the video from the Italian Americans in support of Indigenous Peoples Day, um, pointing out that the celebration of Columbus being the end all for the celebration of Italian immigrants is a shame. It, it, it leaves a lot to be said for everything that's been done in this great nation and, and particularly in Revere by Italian immigrants, um, much more than what Columbus did, um, for sure positive. On Monday, I like to take time personally, um, if we have time off from work to do reading, there's so much reading available here in Revere at the um, History, Historic Society, Revere History Museum, and just online. Um, in At Deer Island, there's plaques. Um, and coming and listening to our meetings, I guess. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Commissioner McGee. Um, and you mentioned um, what Heather Lavelle had said. And um, it was really powerful when she said that being of Italian heritage and having been discriminated against, we actually would want to not have others be discriminated against. At least that's what I heard, and that's why um, she feels that we should sort of stand up in support of this because we've been through it. <laughs> so, uh, Anybody else? I would like just to add to what has been said. I think it's a it's a profound contradiction when you talk about the Italians and, um, and the, the Columbus. There's a particular you know, um, historical context on why the Italians were so proud of uh, you know, um, um, acknowledging Columbus back then um, as an explorer, somebody that he was an outstanding navigator. There's no doubt about it. He was, he was very skillful. Um, but at the same time, the atrocities and the genocide that was committed, that cannot be forgot, forgotten. So um, I think 
one thing that people need to do, and we all need to do, is to be able to s separate the tree from the forest. The tree from the forest because certainly we are trying to take a holiday that is celebrated for the Italians and com basically compare and contrast it with the Columbus. So Columbus, in my view, was not even an Italian guy. So there's compelling evidence lately that shows that. He was not Italian. He was a Spanish um, navigator. He was Hispanic. And uh, nowadays there are other studies that reveal that he might have been from Portugal. So um, it's just some misperceptions and misunderstanding and probably Italians back then that would you know, this euphoria and, and happiness that somebody came from um, back then from Italy uh, to this country and to the new world, trying to conquer it, and they were very proud of it. Um, but it has nothing to do with the Italian Heritage Month, uh, particularly when we talk about the contributions that the indigenous people have brought to areas like to food industry to medicine, to science, and so on and so forth. So the Italians also did the same thing. They brought a lot of contribution to this country. So I always say that, you know, we need to, it's time, the time is here. We need to work together as a community, as members of this um, commission, and uh, to really educate people in the sense that it's time to really, um, you know, acknowledge and recognize uh, the, those whose land have been stolen, those who were here before, those who really suffered in the hands of a criminal like Columbus. Uh, that's critical for us to understand. That's the only way we can certainly build a reconciliation. And it's by knowing the truth and, uh, and be able to really understand the suffering and the exploitation that the indigenous people have gone through. So I was impressed with the, the two ladies that spoke so clearly uh, about this topic. I was particularly impressed with the, um, I think her name is Heather Laval, that she belongs to this Italian organization that's really, it's coming from them. They said, no. Uh, we, we really are pushing for this, for this acknowledgement, because it's overdue. So um, as an educator, as a person who deals with students every day, I think my job in the school district is to continue to make sure that our curriculum and instruction in the classroom gets decolonized, decolonized and the truth is told uh, in a way that uh, will not distort history, because that's the only way that we can inform our current generation and future gener generations uh, to ensure that the, cult, the curriculum that we have in our schools reflect the cultural identity, the history of those who have suffered, who have been exploited in the past, whose history, experience have been distorted to ensure that all voices, all perspectives, our ideas are respected and appreciated in our schools in our classrooms, in the hallway, and throughout Riviera. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Would anyone else like to speak? Commissioner Pish. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to go back to last year when we were talking about Columbus Day and People Indigenous Day. I remember that all the commissioners um, has voted um, to approve um, for the People Indigenous Day in October. Um, so I just want to make sure we revisit that. And what does it take for um, the Human Rights Commission to um, kind of le legalize it in, in the city of Revere? Um, what, what do we need to do? Um, do we need to get approval from the council? City councilors, um, what is our next step? Um, just want to bring that up. 
Thank you. Um, so to that point, we made, we're not a legislative body, um, so we made a recommendation to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day um, and to celebrate it Italian American heritage, you know, in some other way on some other date. Um, there's a lot that has to happen in order for that to take effect on a city level uh, legislatively. And the guidance over the summer that um, I received um, as your recommendation, Commissioner Pish, from the North American Indian Center of Boston um, is that we have some work to do in, in this community. We don't really know um, the Native Americans, the Native people that are living in this community. Um, we need to include them, engage them, hear from them. Um, there's education that needs to be done. So um, this is almost like maybe step two from last year's step one of um, how to go and, and how to move with this um, in a way that um, if it's not made a state or federal holiday, um, that we can work within the community. Um, so I think that after this, um, meeting, and this video excerpt was shared with the City Council, that we can have more conversations, um, and it can be done in a way that is, you know, more uh, harmonious and, and not um, putting sides, you know, one against the other. So there's, there's some steps that we need to take, and there's some work that we need to do. Um, as much as this body supports this and would like to see it happen right away. Um, we're not a legislative body, and so we need to you know, move forward in a way that um, is intelligent, at the same time being passionate. Um, so I just wanted to state that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Does anybody else, uh, like, would anybody else like to speak? Um, I, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate your explanation in terms of um, of the approach and strategy that we should take to ensure that this is done in the right way. Uh, one thing I would say, though, we should really not waver our commitment to this cause in the process because this is just the right thing to do. Yes, agree, and um, I th you know, we sort of there are some ideas brewing of how to continue. Uh, with this, um, you know, with maybe even uh, a guest speaker or, you know, to continue on this for sure. This is not just a one time, well, it's October, so let's show this video clip. This is something, uh, what I'm hearing is that this needs to be in the forefront, um, you know, month to month so that we don't lose momentum. Okay, so Chief Bright, it seemed like you did not, uh, you're not, you don't have anything to add. Uh, anybody else on Zoom? Um, okay, uh, Commissioner Muka Bear. And just so that you know, sometimes, um, Commissioner, your sound is not that clear. I don't know, it's probably a Zoom uh, or Wi-Fi issue, but just so that you're aware. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll try to uh, be closer to the mic. And I apologize for uh, the video issue. I think there is a, a setting, a Zoom setting issue with uh, with my account. So probably, I'm ho hopefully, I can have my video back next next in the next meeting. So uh, I was uh, very impressed by the panelists, uh, and they would like to uh, uh, quote what Mato and Monro said uh, that a lot of people they don't think that there are indigenous people living uh, in the city. Uh, I'm probably one of them. I may have met uh, 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 any in indigenous people, but uh, I'm, I'm willing to connect with them and see how we can uh, support them. Uh, there is clearly evidence that indigenous people lived in the U.S. before 
Columbus claimed that discovered America. Um, and uh, it is obvious because, um, as Winston Churchill said, a history is written by victors, which means that history doesn't usually interpret facts, but it is the interpretation of the winners. Uh, and both panelists are uh, looking for corrections in the history. So there are discrepancies in the history and probably uh, I, I will advocate and they will add my voice to my fellow commissioners to uh, seek uh, corrections into the history or at least support again the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the request that we send to our government. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, most, it was difficult to hear, but mostly it sounded like you were speaking to the importance that many of us maybe don't know Indigenous people, Native people, and that we have work to do. Um, I think we can discuss this at our next meeting, um, whether it's through the evaluation working group or some other way, how do we do a little bit of a deeper dive into the census data and start to um, be able to see who is in our community that are indigenous um, and be able to start to reach out um, in that way? I know I already spoke, um, Madam Chair, but I did just want to, while we're here and while we're taking advantage of this opportunity, there is something documented from the Revere History Museum about a location on Revere Street that was unearthed to be a Native American burial ground that is now the Friendly Gardens Co-op. And as a Human Rights Commission and, and just hearing this call that we want to make, I'd really like to see us do something to acknowledge that and, and put up uh, probably a memorial. Um, this was published by the Revere Hu um, History Museum this past year. Um, and it, it, it's just a post on their um, online, but that um, in, in recent history, 1881, um, basically a native burial ground was unearthed, um, but that this site of the Friendly Gardens Co-op, um, the National Italians Parish, and the St. Anthony's Powda uh, Church are all figureheads here in Revere that we all celebrate, I think, daily without knowing that there's one more acknowledgement we could make in that area, and that would be to acknowledge um, a sacred burial ground. Maybe that's some work we can yes. do. Yes, thank you, Commissioner McGee. Um, I also, um, I mean, upon hearing this um, news, I definitely second um, Molly's, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, the Molly's suggestion to go to the burial ground and like have some memorial or like at least have uh, and like invite the people of Revere but particularly the Native Americans or indigenous people who didn't even know that that was a thing there um, and like have some words and then we can even um, go a step further and have people who do identify as um, a Native American or indigenous to speak upon such discovery but, you know, that could be long down the road before we even get there. Thank you, um, Vice Chair Hosseini. And I've made notes um, about this so that it doesn't, um, you know, fall aside and that we'll continue to work on this and, and look into what um, maybe uh, we have good partnership with the Revere History Museum. Um, and so we can maybe begin there and, and then sort of see how we can trickle that out through the rest of the city and community to make something happen. Is there any other business? Okay. And um, there is, there was one guest here, but that person has left, and I don't see anybody on Zoom, so there is no one to um, 
to come and speak with us in the open forum. Is that correct? Is there anyone on Zoom? Correct? Okay. And um, we can. I can take an inter, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all in favor, you can say aye, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, I see Commissioner, are you raising your hand, uh, Commissioner Mukabir, in favor of the motion, is that correct? Correct. Correct, thank you. And um, lastly, there is no Spanish interpretation live, however, it will be on the Revere TV um, YouTube site, there will be a Spanish interpretation um, videotape. So thank you all, and uh, we plan to be back the first Thursday of November. November 3rd. November 3rd. Thank you. Good night.